Well, we have some new questions in about whether the president-elect will indeed scuttle ag trade deals. Also coming up, we're going to be looking at farm-raised catfish sales. They are climbing. Retail beef prices finally soften up a bit. And demand for U.S. soybeans is surging right now. We begin with catfish and the new numbers reflecting the U.S. market during the month of October. Producers received a pond bank price of $1.22 per pound for the premium size live fish. Now that's up eight cents per pound from a year ago. U.S. farm sales increased 11 percent from October of 2015. Processor sales meanwhile were up almost five percent from one year ago. Well, it's rather a delayed response, but it now appears lower cattle prices have begun to spill over into the meat counter at the grocery store. Analyst Daryl Peel explains what it means for the cattle market. As we go forward, we expect to see demand uh, kick in as prices adjust down at the retail level and so on. And so really, uh, and given that we find ourselves today, again, I think a little lower than we ever really had to be, I think, you know, for the next several months, we're talking about more of a sideways kind of a market than anything. We'll look for some seasonal patterns, some, some, some strength in the spring markets uh, seasonally, and probably some seasonal pressure, you know, a year from now as we get into the fall markets next year, recognizing that we're going to be in a, in a, a larger supply situation. And larger supplies are definitely building over in the hog market. The USDA has now bumped up its production forecast by another 3%. Trader Elaine Cubb says the abundance will depress prices for sure. Stable and cheap and, and will, you know, able to, to spur demand not only here but internationally. So we ha can say that about these prices, that they're cheap. Uh, so, so and, and you look at, the, at the, the contracts going, the deferred contracts going out, and there is some expectation to see a $60 level or a $70 level again sometime in 2017. But I don't know that we're ever going to get there because you talk about the slaughter pace. This is all they can do. You know, 2.45 million head a week, that's literally about as much as they can possibly do. So how can you expect the Packers to be motivated to pay more than the current prices? I think there's very limited reason to get bullish when there's just not the capacity to slaughter any more hogs. Well, it's time for today's trivia quiz. This time of year, many folks have the misfortune to hit a deer with their car or truck while driving. This brings us to our quiz question. How does Mississippi rank nationally as far as the number of auto deer collisions that happen in the state? Is Mississippi number one, number three, number 10, or number 13? We'll have that answer coming up for you. Chinese demand for U.S. soybeans is getting most of the credit now for pushing bean prices higher this fall. But tight supplies in South America are also reportedly helping boost this market. One Midwest bean marketer put it this way, we are about the only store in town right now, and the world market is very hungry for even more soybeans. Well, that hunger by other countries for U.S. beans and other ag commodities could change. It all depends on whether President-elect Donald Trump follows through on his promise to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership as well as other trade deals. Here's analyst Mark Gold's take on what may happen. I think when it's all said and done, I don't believe President-elect Trump is going to really want to dismantle our export market and some of these trade deals. I think some of the trade deals that are really unfair, he might take a look at, but he, the president-elect, has to be sitting today thinking, I am elected president of the United States because of the rule of farm vote, period. And is he going to turn his back on the American farmers now? I don't think he's going to do that. So I think it's long-term positive. A brand new herbicide option for farmers that plant cotton and soybeans has been approved now for use in the next growing season. Peter Tubbs reports on how this may affect some input costs in 2017. A new formulation of the herbicide dicamba was approved by the Environmental Protection Agency for application on genetically modified varieties of soybeans and cotton. Dicamba, a broadleaf herbicide marketed under brand names Diablo, Oracle and Vanquish has been scrutinized in recent years for damage caused to crops in adjoining fields due to spray drift. The herbicide has been marketed as the mate to Monsanto's Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans. Released in 2016, before the new formulation of herbicide was approved for use, 
Officials suspect farmers illegally applied older dicamba formulations on extend beans. The resulting drift damaged thousands of acres. The new herbicide option was welcomed by growers struggling with weed pressure due to chemical resistance. Multiple weed species have developed resistance to glyphosate after years of overuse as a silver bullet for weed problems. Growers in the southern United States have resorted to manual labor to remove trouble weeds and, in many cases, followed the work with burning their fields after harvest. Despite the recent approval of the new formula, some soybean farmers feel they are being forced into planting Roundup Ready to extend soybeans in 2017. They fear neighbors who plant Extend will spray the cheaper, older, and still illegal formulations, risking yield loss on crops sensitive to dicamba. Well, back to our trivia quiz question now as we wrap things up in the markets for this week. And our answer is C. Mississippi is ranked number 10 in the country.